Generator Connection Accessories Generator Circuit Breaker Introduction Generator circuit breakers for use in conjunction with isolated phase bus have been in operation for the past few decades. As generator sizes increased, the rated continuous current, rated braking, and short time withstand current under fault conditions required of the associated generator circuit breaker also increased. Medium voltage circuit breakers, used in the distribution network, could not keep pace with this increase. Most have a maximum current rating of 3 kA, a braking capacity of 40 kA, and a short time fault current withstand capability for one second. The absence of a higher rated capacity of these breakers resulted in generators being directly connected to the generator transformer with tap-off to auxiliary loads, excitation system, and surge protection voltage transformer cubicles. The synchronizing with the grid was carried out at the high voltage end of the generator transformer. All power stations, with large size generators, require power to run their respective auxiliaries. The unit auxiliary loads could be quite significant in the case of thermal, nuclear or gas power plants and marginal in the case of hydroelectric power plants. For a plant where the generator is directly connected to a generator transformer, the auxiliary load is fed initially through a station transformer connected to the switchyard. Once the generator is synchronized to the grid through a circuit breaker connected on the high voltage side of the generator transformer and its unit auxiliary transformer is energized, the unit auxiliary load is transferred from the station bus to the unit auxiliary transformer bus for continuous operation. Such a scheme requires a bay comprising isolators, breakers, and instrument transformers in the switchyard to feed the station transformer. The station transformer may be fed from the bus connected to the generator transformer or from a nearby switchyard at a lower voltage. When a generator is connected to the generator transformer through a generator circuit breaker, the unit auxiliary transformer is energized through a back feed from the generator transformer. The generator is synchronized by the generator circuit breaker at generation voltage, thereby avoiding a need for a station transformer and its associated bay in the switchyard on the high voltage side and switchgear on the medium voltage side. There are several advantages of installing a generator circuit breakers. It may be economical to install a generator circuit breaker than to have an additional switchyard bay with a startup transformer and associated high voltage and medium voltage switchgear. It is possible to install several electrical accessories on either side of the generator circuit breaker for metering, protection, and control, such as current transformers, voltage transformers, surge arresters, surge capacitors, starting disconnect switch, and shorting and earthing switches. These accessories will form an integral part of a generator circuit breaker in a common housing. Provision can be made on the enclosure for the installation of a manual or motorized shorting of the conductor, which is sized for the rated current needed for conducting the generator drying out operation. In the absence of a generator circuit breaker, these accessories would have been accommodated in the run of the isolated phase bus as well as surge protection and voltage transformer cubicles. All the accessories, installed in a generator circuit breaker housing, are easily accessible for routine maintenance. Without a generator circuit breaker, the generator neutral point to the terminal of the HV circuit breaker connected to the generator transformer. And, tap-offs in between to the auxiliary transformer excitation transformer, surge protection voltage transformer cubicles, will comprise a common zone of protection for isolation by the HV breaker, in the event of a fault within the zone. With the generator circuit breaker, it is possible to split the zone into two. One zone comprises all elements, from the terminal of the high voltage breaker to the terminal of the generator circuit breaker on generator transformer side, comprising generator transformer, auxiliary transformers, surge protection and voltage transformer cubicle, if separately installed, and any other tap-off in between. The other zone from the generator neutral to the terminal of the generator circuit breaker on generator side, comprising the generator, excitation transformer, surge protection and voltage transformer cubicle, if separately installed and any other tap-off in between. The fault in the respective zones can be isolated thereby minimizing the time taken to identify the fault and synchronizing the unit back in service. For generator starting up and shutting down operation, only the generator circuit breaker needs to be operated. A typical generator circuit breaker with associated components that can be installed in each pole is displayed. The generator circuit breaker housing can accommodate current transformers, surge capacitors, disconnect switch, voltage transformers, starting disconnect switch, earth switch, 
Surge arresters. Any maintenance or replacement of the accessories, if installed in the generator circuit breaker enclosure, will have to be carried out after de-energizing and earthing that section. Many power stations still prefer to have current transformers installed in the run of the isolated phase bus. And, voltage transformers with surge arresters and surge capacitors mounted separately in the panels. Generator circuit breakers are designed to interface with the isolated phase bus. The generator circuit breaker is made of three single pole units and their operating mechanisms are connected electrically and mechanically to ensure simultaneous opening and closing. The generator circuit breaker enclosure is normally directly welded to the isolated phase bus enclosure. A suitable conical adapter is welded onto the circuit breaker housing if the diameters of the mating surfaces do not match. This will ensure continuity of the enclosure currents through the generator circuit breaker enclosure. A generator circuit breaker enclosure can also be interfaced with the isolated phase bus enclosure with rubber bellows. A suitable conical adapter is welded onto the circuit breaker housing if the diameters of the mating surfaces do not match. For the continuity of the enclosure current, aluminium laminates of cross-sectional area equal to that of the isolated phase bus enclosure can be evenly distributed along the periphery of the bellows connecting the generator circuit breaker and isolated phase bus enclosures. Alternatively, bellows can be used without the laminates across them which will isolate the generator circuit breaker enclosure from the isolated phase bus enclosure both mechanically and electrically. To ensure a path for the enclosure circulating currents, bonding bars connecting the IPB enclosures must be installed at both ends of the generator circuit breaker. The generator circuit breaker enclosure must be separately grounded as it is insulated from its support frame. Since the generator circuit breaker poles will not be shielded effectively for the short circuit forces, the generator circuit breaker manufacturer's consent shall be sought. The terminals of the generator circuit breaker are recommended to be connected to the isolated phase bus terminals by silver-plated copper laminates. For this, it is necessary to provide an end tab at the conductor of the isolated phase bus to exactly replicate the generator circuit breaker terminals. Anti-collapsing discs are installed on the conductor to restrain the laminates from collapsing due to the forces generated during a short circuit. Generator circuit breaker manufacturers have the designs for the mounting platform. These platforms can be supplied by the generator circuit breaker manufacturer. Generator circuit breakers generate large axial reaction forces during the closing, opening, and fault clearing processes. These must be factored while making the foundation for the generator circuit breaker and interfacing with the isolated phase bus. It is advisable to get the approval of the design of the foundation and interface from the generator circuit breaker manufacturer. Sulfur hexafluoride, vacuum, and air blast have been used as arc quenching media in generator circuit breakers. Generator circuit breakers with sulfur hexafluoride as the quenching media are most widely used. These have a continuous current rating of up to 25 kA under natural air cooling and 50 kA under forced air cooling, up to a voltage rating of 36 kV. This is almost in line with the isolated phase bus philosophy wherein the isolated phase bus, rated above 25 kA, seems to be more economical and practical with forced cooling. Vacuum has been used as a quenching media for continuous ratings up to 15 kA up to a rated voltage of 24 kV. Vacuum interrupters are connected in parallel in each pole to achieve the specified rated current. Air blast, as a quenching media in the generator circuit breaker, has also been used in the past and some are still in operation. These generator circuit breakers are easy to maintain. Generator circuit breakers suitable for isolated phase bus connections are quite expensive and this could be a deterrent for their installation for smaller sets. Several captive power plants with smaller unit ratings have buzz ducts connected to the medium voltage circuit breakers that only partially meet the specification requirements for the rated current and braking capacity. The following specific requirements of the circuit breaker may be understood when installed in a generator connection. The phase spacing in the buzz duct is substantially larger than that of the incoming terminals of the medium voltage circuit breaker panel. Medium voltage circuit breaker panels are very compact and the phase spacing is kept to a minimum. Most breakers have an insulating barrier between the poles to meet the basic insulation level requirement. A custom-built panel may be made to ensure that the phase spacing at the panel is compatible with the termination of the buzz duct. The phase spacing of the breaker cannot be changed. 
A much larger factor of safety on the insulation may be required to reduce the probability of insulation failure resulting in a short circuit. A line-to-ground fault may be less harmful to a generator since the current will be limited by the neutral grounding resistor, but when all the three phases are near, as in a panel, it can develop into a line-to-line -line fault and ultimately into a triple line-to-ground fault. The DC component of a fault current fed from the generator is higher than that fed from the system. Therefore, the arcing time could be much longer. The rate of rise of recovery voltage RRV, on fault current interruption is far higher in case of a generator connection, as high as 3.5 kV per microsecond than for a distribution network which is of the order of 0.4 kV per microsecond. This is due to a very high reactance to resistance ratio of the generator circuit that results in a DC component exceeding 100% of the peak of the AC component. There should not be any auto reclosing feature for the generator breaker panel. Generator circuit breaker is expected to operate under different severity of current and voltage while breaking a fault current, depending upon the location of the fault. Location of fault at A. The fault is fed by the system through a comparatively low impedance generator transformer. The breaker is expected to interrupt a combination of high symmetrical fault current with a 75% DC component superimposed on it. To analyze the waveform, the source voltage can be kept constant and a variable reactance of the generator can be considered to be a combination of. A subtransient reactance, X double dash D is associated with a time constant, T double dash D. This phenomenon is attributed to the presence of damper winding on the poles of an alternator. The subtransient reactance may vary from 10% to 20% for turbo alternator and 15% to 20% for a salient pole machine. The subtransient time constant is of the order of 20 milliseconds. A transient reactance, X-D is associated with a time constant T-D. This phenomenon is attributed to the presence of field winding of the alternator. The transient reactance may vary from 15% to 25% for turbo alternator and 25% to 35% for a salient pole machine. The transient time constant is of the order of 100 to 500 milliseconds. A steady state or synchronous reactance, XD is attributable to the armature winding. The steady state reactance may vary from 150% to 230% for turbo alternator and 70% to 130% for a salient pole machine. A periodic component with a time constant TA is approximately 100 milliseconds. Location of fault at B. The fault is fed by the generator. Though the impedance of the generator is higher than the impedance of the generator transformer and consequently the magnitude of the AC component is lower, the DC component can exceed more than 100% under certain conditions. This is because of the high X by R ratio. Therefore, the asymmetry is very pronounced and the quenching of arc that is initiated at the current zero location may take a significantly longer time. The arcing time could last several cycles and the breaker must be designed to withstand electrical, thermal, and electromechanical stresses arising out of this delay. Location of fault at C. The severity of fault at this location is much less due to the inclusion of the generator transformer impedance. Thank you. For a comprehensive understanding of the theory and practices of busbar systems, it is advisable to read the book An Introduction to Busbar Systems where contents are organized in a sequence for ease of reading and facilitates cross-reference. Please procure a copy of the book with a requisition to bala at busbarsystems.net.